All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. This is going to be a match number three, game number one between AT and Cloud and Mal's Mana. Of course, I'm joined alongside my good old friend, Jake Orbs Glaru. Jake, how excited can you possibly be for this turn versus Protoss? Man, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I could not possibly be more excited, Andre. This is going to be absolutely phenomenal. Cloud Do you know why that Mana. is? Ex please tell me, Grant. It's because you're an amazing person. I would person. love to know. It's because I'm an amazing person? You're an amazing person. Thank you, but you know, somehow I don't think that has anything to do with uh, the PVT you're about to okay. watch. Okay, do you know I what else is completely different? Uh, not different, but completely random. Um, okay. Sheth. You might know him. Sean Sheth Simon. Of course. He asked me a question. He said, if you are, there was a zombie apocalypse to happen, where and what would you, where would you go, what would you do? And what did you say? I, well, I don't want to. I don't want to influence what you say. Oh, oh, I have to answer. Please, please think about it first. You don't have to answer it right now. You can All say, right, "Give I'll me a little bit of time." On. Okay. Later on, we're, we're, I'm going to ask you in game number two. Game two. There we go, man. Okay. That's where I'm going to ask you in game two. But Zombie basically, apocalypse. I said Sheth is an idiot. Wow. And he Dog has no man. critical thinking skills with his answer. Okay. And uh, he said the same for me. So <laughs> we're right now in. We're in like a feudal I war. The tiebreaker here. Is that what's up? Yeah, b basically, b because all the players we ask, they always, well, most of them side with me because I'm a smart <laughs> person. But uh, oh we're in a feudal boy. war, so that's something random, something to stew on for a little bit. Everybody out there at home, please go and PM Sheth and tell him how silly he is. <laughs> mm. I'm sure he'll appreciate the PMs regardless. <laughs> uh, Sheth's such a nice guy. I like know. The most manner guy you can ever find in esports. Do, like uh, do you know who else is mannered, though? Cloud and Mana. Both of those players there you go. are super mannered. Oh my gosh, we're actually casting them. Oh man, what a coincidence, Andre. <laughs> Holy God. Unbelievable. Gold. But you know what? It's going to be a PVT on Taldarim, So Yeah, so tell me a little bit about Taldarim Alter. Oh, wait, hold on. We we do have a little bit of uh, funny business going on here with Cloud. He's actually going to make a fast command center. But tell me a little bit about Taldarim Alter. Tell me uh, what you think about it, Terran versus Protoss. Well, it's an interesting map because not only does it not have a small ramp leading into the main, of course, has a large choke, but also has a somewhat harder to defend natural. There are two entrances, a large ramp and another back entrance from the third. I mean, it's a great macro map because there are so many bases available, but uh, oftentimes, especially with the way that the bases are a little bit disjointed, it can be really difficult in PvE to defend against. Drops all over the place, of course, especially that type of position you can get behind the natural as well to shoot up with medevacs to kill off the assimilators, things like that can be very effective. Um, but overall, I feel overall, it's a, it's a pretty balanced map PVT. It just comes down to the strategies the players choose. I feel like, uh, you know, just air is a little bit underutilized on this map for Protoss players. They could use Phoenixes to deny Medivacs pretty easily. But you know what? Blink is also a great option. A lot of players go for that Blink first to be able to uh, deny those drops pretty easily. One thing about this map in particular, because it's so open, you get medevacs all around the place and the expansions are spread out. A, a lot of times medevac drops are going to be so important and they're so deadly. The big thing that I see um, countless times with my Terran vs. Protoss is if you are able to shut down the medevacs, not necessarily you know stop the drops completely, but if you're able to kill the medevacs from continuing on, it'll severely dampen the speed in which the Terran can actually go and, and get their advantages. So I think it's going to come down to how well can Mana remove those medevacs from the field and how well can he actually start to take initiative and take that uh, offensive role that he really wants to get into when he's going in his PVTs. Yeah, that's really true. Early on, you know, medevacs are very similar to sentries in that regard, that you need to start building up that energy, man. The more exactly. energy you have available during a fight, the better off you're going to be in that fight, of course. And, uh, you know, when you come in with reinforcements, uh, obviously medevacs are generally going to have enough energy for one fight, but, you know, with the continuation of battles, you really need that extra energy. So, a very good point. But, uh, you know what, another thing, I, I'm sorry, quickly oh, no, I to mention, it's the opportunity cost that the starport is not making Vikings. So if I kill all the medevacs or if I feed back all the medevacs, something like that, all of a sudden you're left with not having the ability to make Vikings to counter something like, you know, Colossus. So it strengthens your Colossus at that point in time. And I really feel like it's such an underused ability feedback to just go ahead and remove all the medevacs from the field. 
Yeah, indeed it is. Now, interestingly, we do see pretty much the most standard builds possible from these players. Mana did go for the one gate expansion and then added on the double gate afterwards. So did not go for that quick robo. Not really worried about the possibility, of course, uh, of some type of one on one as he did see the command center already done for Cloud. So he knows Cloud went for that really early expansion. And if he is clever enough, should be able to realize it was Command Center first. Meanwhile, Cloud went straight to three racks and then got that double gas. And now look at this, actually. I thought maybe he'd use that double gas and this third gas to go for some quick medevacs. But he's already thrown down a third Command Center, Andre. So it looks like Cloud is going to be gearing up for the late game. Cloud is being a little cheesy cheeser, man. And I do say this is cheesy because this is basically I'm hoping to God. Look, l look at what he has scouted on mana. Very minimal. He just has one scan that went down. And he's basically saying, I'm hoping that you're not going to be attacking me because if you do, I'm going to be in a lot of trouble. If you don't, though, uh, I'm going to be leagues and leagues ahead because income tab is already showing equal harvesters. He's going to have three mules, though to compensate instead of just two, that's going to be gigantic. Yeah, and you know what? One of the hardest things for Terrence is reproducing SCVs and producing them in the first place. When you have that third orbital command, not only do you have triple muling, you also have that triple SCV production. And when oh you go yeah. for that command center first, that SCV count trying to get to max saturation as quick as possible is so important. I love what Mana's doing right now. He's got to be a little bit careful with these stalkers, but he's doing exactly what he needs to. He's just using those shields as a resource whenever the shields are full, going for the engagement, force some of those SCVs off the line to spend money repairing and not be mining uh, and then just go back as soon as you're out of shields and uh, be ready to engage again so <laughs> great micro and play here from mana is a little bit supply block um, but not the biggest deal assuming is that well actually no he doesn't have another pylon on the way wow mana's gonna be supply block here for quite a while yes he will finally realizing what's going on mana is just microing too much and not actually realizing what's going on with his Mac. Of course, we do see him just stopped in probes, but in the meantime, we do have on the other side Cloud, who's looking really good. He's actually supply capped as well, so they're going to even out <laughs> in the supply capping wars. Oh, man. You know what, though? Cloud already has plus one two-thirds of the way done. That is crazy fast there uh, coming out of that transition. That's how you know he did that with that double gas. Didn't go for the quick factory. Went instead for the quick upgrades. Now, Mana, Mana does have this observer in Cloud's base, um, but unfortunately has not seen that quick eBay just yet. But you know what he has seen? The third orbital. So right now, Mana knows he's going to be behind. If he can't get that third expansion up very quickly, that's why I sent all of his stalkers back so he could kill off those destructible rocks as quickly as possible and get ready to take that third base. Yeah, it's a tough situation for Mana to be in. He has to, he's pretty much committed to going this really fast Colossus. I would expect him to actually go all the way up to getting that uh, that really fast... Actually, he's not getting the Thermal Lance, but I would love him to get that Thermal Lance. Right now, where his Absolutely. huge advantage is going to be his tech. He knows his opponent has gone a very fast expansion. Now put down the third command center before any form of tech. So he knows, okay, my opponent won't have Vikings by the time I have my Thermal Lance. Let me go ahead and take advantage of that timing. He should be able to come over here, right around here, put his Colossus, uh, uh, and start yeah. sniping out SCVs. Yeah, it's a great strategy to utilize on this map, similar to putting tanks there or marauders to kill off uh, the Vesmin geysers, but of course, as you said, the Thermal Lance is very important for that. I mean, luckily, Colossi can walk up cliffs, but what you want to be doing is you want to have keep your Colossi in a safe spot shooting. You, want, you don't want to have to walk them in range where you know, all of a sudden marauders with a nice stim can just run up and kill everything. Cloud's going to try to get some scouting information with this SCV. It looks like it might get denied, but it's possible to get into the base. That could be terrible for mana. Just all that free scouting information. He is going to go check for that third uh, there. Does oh, he does <laughs> get killed off by the last tick from that century. So mana is going to be able to deny that scouting. Um, but look at the third orbital already down at the third for Cloud. Um, and there is actually a pylon there. Has that been scouted? Oh, yeah, it has been yeah. seen. So Cloud will be able to take that out pretty quickly and shouldn't. Uh, have to worry about that at all. Yeah, so man is doing something kind of interesting. He's just taking the ec economic loss. He doesn't even care. Uh, income tap is showing 57 to 51, slightly ahead, but not that much. But look at that income. It's quite larger for our Terran player over here, Cloud. Cloud is just pumping and churning out those units. He's all the way up to, it looks like, one, two, three, four, five, six barracks. He has two reactors on them and four tech labs. And it looks like another starport is coming up right now. He needs to compensate for the lack of tech he's had for so long. But Mana, he's not even utilizing his advantage right now. I feel like he's going to go into this, and he's going to have a severely smaller army than his opponent. Yeah, I think Cloud is gearing up for an excellent mid-game transition. He has a second starport on the way, so great read by him. He'll be able to get out tons of Vikings as well as Metavacs. Uh, if he wants to, or can just double produce. And he got that armory up with double eBay, so he's getting great double upgrades. And look at that, Andre, a oh fourth God, command center. Dude. Cloud is a macro beast. It is yeah. going to take some crazy play from mana, maybe some multi-pronged drop harass, uh, or maybe just some really 
quick expansion from himself. Looks like he is going to get ready to take that fourth. Uh, so both these players are just really, really favoring that late game. We even have the double upgrades on the way for mana as well. He's got Blink on the way, Temple Archives as well. So it looks like both these players, without putting on almost any aggression on each other, are just kind of turtling up and trying to just get maxed, it looks like. Yep, that's exactly what they're doing. Mana over here, he actually wants to probably snipe a couple of these tech mm -hmm. labs. He has his Stalkers positioned over here on the right-hand side of the main. Blink is almost about finished. Cyanic Storm is also being transitioned, so he's going for the High Templar Colossus, that Death Ball army. Uh, but pretty soon, we're going to see these Blink Stalkers do their damage. Here they come right now, and they're just going to go directly for, looks like those reactors, but... Um, Oh, all right. You know, it's definitely a great choice. I mean, obviously taking out the tech lab can uh, hinder more production of things like ghosts, uh, marauders, and there is a ghost academy now on the way. A nice scan to pick off that observer, uh, uh, by the way. Definitely a great choice to prevent those oh talkers yeah. from getting back in. Um, but, you know, at least if you kill off the reactor, that does, of course, you know, just cut that production in half out of that barracks. I mean, it's not that much, and he doesn't. I feel like it probably wasn't cost-effective when he lost those stalkers. Um, but you really got to hand it to Mana. I love this scouting. He's got pylons all over the map on the left side just watching for if Cloud takes any additional expansions to be able to warp in some units. So it looks like he will be able to see that fourth as it lands. And we'll have to see if he tries to warp in any type of units to go for uh, some harassment there. Now we can see finally Cloud looks like he wants to push out right now. He doesn't have that many medevacs, actually. Let's go ahead and look at the units tab. One medevac to his name. Wow. Um, which, okay, it's not a big deal. I don't mind this at all because there haven't been any initial battles. What it basically says is, I'm uh, focusing all my energy on this one attack. Now, medevacs aren't the best. They're good, don't get me wrong, but uh, you always want to have them. But um, I, I guess what he's thinking is, i rather focus on all my DPS and end the army and the battle really quick. Medivacs don't have that much burst heal. Uh, and, you know, of course, mana is representing a lot of burst damage with the Colossus, with the High Templars. Well, you know, that's the thing. The High Templar, he can also feed back the Medivacs. So perhaps Cloud just doesn't want to overcommit two Medivacs and then yep. just get them all feed back. Precisely. They end up being a wasted investment. But with Medivac engagement here, some Vikings going for the Colossus. They do almost snip. They One Colossus goes Ooh. down. Nice storms on the Vikings and on the army, but great kiting by oh, Cloud. Man. Unbelievable micro so far. And you saw that spread now. The other stim is going to come up. The last Colossus is being targeted down right now by those Vikings. Will it be able to go down? Yes, it will, finally. Now the Marines and Marauders are going to spread up into these Stalkers. The Stalkers are not going to be able to hold this off. And as I said before, the Marine Marauders are just going to be too tough to deal with. The third is being focused down, oh. and there goes that Nexus. Oh, and you might be able to snipe this next Colossus as well. Moves in with the Marines and Marauders. Does not quite snipe it, but doing a bit of damage to these uh, probes as well. Mana falling way behind right now. It's 85 food to 145. Cloud has taken a huge advantage. He hit at that great timing with 2-2, I believe, before Mana had his quite finished, but I feel like maybe Mana just didn't add his extra gateways on quite early enough they didn't have the reinforcements. Either way, he took a lot of damage. It looks like most of Cloud's army uh, has been cleaned up, but look at all the reinforcements streaming along. So, oh, yeah. including Ghosts, I don't see how Mana can come back here. I don't either. Now just trying his hardest. Mana actually losing his natural nexus. Ghosts are in this. There goes the EMP. He actually EMPs all of his medevacs. Cobra recent too. <laughs> <laughs> but still, Mana is looking so far behind. He has no way to actually continue on. Now, finally, targeting oh, down this middle right expansion. All the units being uh, rallied all the way over here. And we do see that Mana just dying to get uh, units up as fast as possible. Yeah, that fourth was spotted by that Marine. So now Cloud's going to be able to move forward for some aggression. There's only four Zealots there. So Mana's in a lot of trouble. I mean, he also never used that forward pylon he had over at the left base. There we go. Actually, finally warped in a stalker over there. So he'll be able to use that behind the line of the uh, Planetary Fortress. But, uh, of course, I mean, that's just not going to be enough to get back into this game. It's way too far back. And there's the GG. Game one going to Cloud. And you know, I really feel it was just the overall build, and Mana did not try to even things out. The big advantage that he had, he should he saw it. He saw my opponent did an expansion, then he would have command center before any factories. I need to press up with my tech, and he just sat there. He didn't do anything. He just played defensive. I guess he was thinking, oh, crap, my opponent's head. I just got to play a little bit safer. But no, he could have gotten back into it. He has a clear advantage with that Thermal Lance time, with the Colossus time. Your opponent doesn't have any Vikings. Even still, you need like four Vikings to accurately stop any Colossus shenanigans because what they can do, even if they only have two Vikings, you can go and attack twice, kill some SCVs, just back up to your Stalkers. Yeah, All of a sudden, you're back. good again. 
Exactly. Mm-hmm. Get your shields back. Absolutely. Uh, but we didn't see that. We didn't I see wish that. we did. I you really know, wish we did. Yeah, you know, that's a great point because that's actually the number one reason to go for Colossi on that map exactly. is that strategy. And he didn't even utilize it. Exactly. The biggest problem I had, though, with that game, I feel like both players were building up at a similar rate and it looked like it was pretty even. I feel like uh, there was just some mismanagement in that army from Mana yeah. because when he went for the engagement, he didn't throw it on any force fields at first. He was just kind of engaging. Then he tried to pull back, and his zealots were like dying as they were pulling back. He had already lost like two or three of his colossi. Then he threw down the force fields. But you know true. what? The colossi were already dead. It was too late, man. So if he had thrown down those force fields when he was defending that ramp, cut that Terran army in half, maybe he would have been in a better position. You're absolutely right. It's really unfortunate to see, um, you know, mana just do a couple of little fumbles. Very uncharacteristic of him. But nevertheless, we're going to go on to game two and see if we can come back into this. Join us. Cloud is up 1-0, and we have more action coming your way after this break.